Morning, good morning. Good morning. So excited to have Mama Mary on with us today. So she's here on the phone with us. Um, excited to have you guys on with us. I'm excited to be back with us. Tom and I went to Colorado and I was able to teach at Karis Bible College. I do that every year. So thankful for Debbie and Michelle and Lori, all of them to fill in for me while I was gone. Hi, Sandra. Hi, Jan. Good to see you guys this morning. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, welcome. <clears throat> I'm so, so, so excited about today's Bible study. Um, got up early this morning, had a lot of good time with the Lord. Tom and I drove back from Colorado and um, spent almost the entire drive back going through some teachings, going through what we think God's been speaking to us. And um, my goodness, oh my goodness, anyway. So I just, I've just been at this place. It's it's a good place. And then I open up the Bible this morning and I really read last minute, but it's like these words just wrapped up and summarized everything Tom and I have been talking about these last several days. Um, oh, uh, uh, Mary, Nancy Griffith from our Dream Big Retreat said to tell you hi and that her grand sure do enjoy the kazoo. <laughs> Hope you can hear her, Nancy. Uh, Mary said, wonderful. <laughs> she said she hopes you do too. <laughs> Mm, so good to see everybody. I miss you guys when I'm gone. I do. I I miss you guys. But this morning, I really want to, I want to press in a little bit this morning. Um, in fact, mom and I was on the phone just a few minutes ahead of Bible study this morning. It'd been a couple of days since I got to talk to her. And, you know, she was pointing out that this summer has been a period of time where there's been a lot of deaths. And I know even in my circle, my inner circle, I've got two of my dream big girls that's lost their mamas um, recently. I know we've got several in our prayer journal that's lost a father or lost a spouse. Um, we've got a lot of folks that their children are very, very ill. We have a local boy here in Skytook who had a form of a, I, I'm not going to do justice to this, but he was working out in the gym <clears throat> and he had a form of a, like a blood vein aneurysm. Maybe it was an artery aneurysm. I don't know. It's a specific kind. It's not, it's not just in one location. It's his whole, if I'm understanding it right, it's his whole circulatory system. And uh, hear this. I think he's 17 year old boy was lifting weights and felt something happening. And he was actually able to call 911 and 911 got to him fast enough that it saved his life. Cause had that not happened, it would have, it really would have killed him within just a few more seconds. But the struggle that he's going through and the struggle his parents are going through that, I mean, it's touch and go it's, it's touch and go. And there's just a lot, the, the economy, inflation, the heat that we've had this year. Life has been hard. Our third year out from a pandemic that changed everything for this generation. Um, life has been hard. It's been hard. The resistance has been strong. <clears throat> and... Um, I want to use today's reading to encourage you. Um, but more importantly than that, I want to I want to share with you. The only thing I have to share with you is my story. And the only reason I would share my story is simply to encourage you because he's no respecter of persons. There are things happening in my life right now that I can absolutely see is a culmination of all of the things that God's been teaching me 
since I become faithful daily to read this book, his book, his word, the Bible, the B-I-B-L-E, as my daddy liked to say, the basic instructions before leaving earth, his love letter. I call it God's love letter to me. And he has been teaching me kingdom principles, his kingdom, his world, heaven principles while I'm here on this earth to help me for the tough times. I told you that, you know, early in 2020, when the pandemic first came out, as I was going through my Bible, I saw at various locations where all of a sudden, it seems, I started, the words started jumping off the page at me where he tells us that he'll tell us things in advance. And early in the pandemic, it was like, Lord, how did I miss that? How did I not know that was that this was coming? How did I? And yet going back through my Bible and reading through my Bible, he was telling me. He did prepare me. He did warn me. I, I mean, you know, after I lost my daddy in one of my quiet times of just allowing myself to feel the pain of losing my daddy, to feel the void in this physical life of his presence in my daily life. I picked up this book, <clears throat> this Bible, and there are, I don't know how many pages, a bunch. There are right at 1,400 pages, just under, just under, four, I think it's 1,396 pages, 1,396 pages. And I flipped through every page. And I read the nuggets. I read the text messages I wrote in my Bible that my daddy sent to me. And they touched my heart in such a way I wrote them into my Bible. I read about his struggle. I read that on June the 20th of this year, he had called me and said, Sissy, I can feel my life slipping from me and it's going fast. That was on June the 20th and on August the 27th, he said his last breath, a major time in my life. I can't begin to tell you the comfort that this book brings to me every single day. And I started this all out <clears throat> telling you how excited I am. I had no idea that I'd have tears today. No problem with my tears. I have a good reason to cry. I have a good reason to cry. I have more than one reason to cry. Part of my tears is sheer joy and happiness. Because what God is showing me, and is it's almost like he's wrapping it up in that package I talk about you know, putting it in a box and putting a great big bow on it. And he's handing it to me and he's saying, Elizabeth, finally, finally, all of the gifts that I promised you, you're finally ready to receive them and claim them as yours. I mean, those are shouting words. I mean, I read this book more and more now and it comes more and more alive to me than it ever has. And, and I, and I I want to I want to take it from right here in my heart and I want to give it to every one of you guys. And the only way I can do that is sharing my stories. So as God's been planning these details about the kingdom in my life and preparing me, I've gone all the way back to 20 years ago when I first started reading this daily Bible. 
I've gone all the way back and I can see different times periods where words jumped out on the pages on the days that I needed. We recently have watched Debbie's journey with her husband, Steve, and her own journey of her own pain, physical pain. She's going to have surgery coming up here in a few days. And um, we saw Debbie's tears one day. And I'm so glad that we can be real. Lori doesn't hold back her tears when she teaches. And I just, I love the realness of what we do here because life is hard. No matter how good your life is, no matter how blessed you know that you are, I am blessed. I am the most blessed woman on the face of this earth. I know I am. And yet life is hard. And so uh, I'm getting a new awareness of those nuggets that us girls that teach talk about. The nuggets. I no longer even want to just call them nuggets. Because I'm getting a new awareness of faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. And that when we have faith, it should be grounded in the word of God. So I woke up today, September the 22nd, and it feels like I have mountains of stuff in front of me. It feels like to get to where I'm going, I'm going to have to climb these humongous mountains to get there. And it's like, it seems so distant and it seems so hard. And it's this, it's this easy for me to see the sweat I'm going to have to have to get there. And yet his word tells me that I get there in Sabbath rest, not sweat. Not sweat. Sweat's Old Testament. To get there is Sabbath rest. And so one of the things I want to start emphasizing, it's already September, and I know I'm a very forward thinker. Sometimes that's a good thing. Sometimes it's not. I'm already thinking about 2023. I'm already looking for God to show me my guiding scriptures for 2023. And at the exact same time I say that, <laughs> I need to go back and remember that I've got guiding scriptures for 2022, and 2022 is not done yet. I have guiding scriptures for 2022, and I need to review those. In fact, I will do that today because it just came to me as I'm talking to you. <clears throat> and <laughs> knowing that this hasn't been an easy year for me, I don't think this has been an easy year for you. And I've got a lot of, hmm. I wanted to say I have a lot of hard work. I have, but let me just say it this way. I have a lot ahead of me. God has showed me his plan. I have the vision. I have zero doubt, zero doubt that I am walking out the plan that God has for me. But I can see that it won't be easy. And it's so easy to grow weary. It's so easy. I, I, I prayed in my prayer closet this week. God, I, I just need more energy. I, I just, I need to be able to last longer in the day. I, I'm, I'm just being real with you. <laughs> And then wait till you see what he said to me in today's reading. So I uh, said all of this to prepare us for what I want to do today. For just a brief moment, I want you, we're going to pause and we're going to have some silence. And I want you to assess where you are right now today, September the 22nd of 2022. And I want you to, for a moment, to allow whatever's been on your shoulders for this year to surface. Just, just enough to realize that you have an awareness of 
the struggle of this year. We're not we're not going to deep, deep we're not going to dive deep into that. We're we're just going to let it surface because then I'm going to show you what I so want you to get about reading the daily Bible study. So again, to recap, I'm going to take just a couple of seconds and we're going to go silent as you think about how tired you are, maybe how discouraged you are, or you for a moment see that depression is knocking on your door, anxiety, stress has been knocking. You may not have opened the door, praise God. Some of you have. But we're going to allow us to feel what causes us to be so weary for just a moment. And, and we're going to do that. And we're going to pause starting right now. We're going to take a deep breath in and blow it out. And I want to use your sanctified imagination. That means the imagination that God created for you to use for his glory. And I want you to pretend that you're in my prayer closet with me. And now I want you to use your sanctified imagination to pretend that it's your prayer closet and that you're alone. There's no distractions. And we're in that moment of realization about how hard life has been for us. And then I want you to close your eyes and I'm going to say a quick little prayer and then I'm going to share today's Bible reading with you today. Father God, I thank you, Lord, for leading us to this place today. Thank you for clearing our minds from the distractions that we can focus firmly and fully on you. Thank you, Lord, for taking us to our prayer closet, our, our safe place with you and I thank you that there is fertile soil in the hearts of those that can hear my voice as these seeds, your word, is spoken into their life today. And it's in your son, Jesus Christ's name, I pray. Amen. So I'd like for you to keep your eyes closed. <clears throat> And, and, and I want to speak these words over you today. This is Isaiah chapter 39, 40, and 41. I've showed you everything. I've showed you everything I own. Comfort, comfort my people, says our God. Speak tenderly to us. Tell her the sad days are gone and that their sins are pardoned. Clear the way through the wilderness for the Lord. Make a straight highway through the wasteland for our God. Straighten the curves and smooth out the rough places. Then the glory of the Lord will be revealed. And all people will see it together. The Lord has spoken. Shout it louder. God's people, shout. And do not be afraid. Your God is coming. Yes, the sovereign, sovereign Lord is coming in power. He will rule with a powerful arm in your heart. 
See, he brings his reward with him as he comes. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will carry the lambs in his arms, holding them close to his heart. He will gently lead the mother sheep with her young. He will gently lead the mother sheep with her young. Who else held the oceans in his hand? Who has measured off the heavens in his fingers? Who else knows the weight of the earth or has weighed the mountains and hills on a scale? Who's able to advise the spirit of the Lord? Who knows enough to give him advice or teach him? To whom can you compare God? Are you deaf to the words of God? Look up into the heavens. Who created all the stars? He brings them out like an army, one after another, calling each by its name. Because of his great power and incomparable strength, not a single one is missing. The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of all the earth. He never grows weak or weary. He gives power to the weak and strength to the powerless. But those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. They will soar high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. I thank you, Father, for those words. I thank you, Lord, for those words. I thank you that today, September the 22nd, 2022 that we needed those words today and that they do exactly what you say they will do it brings us strength we we find new strength in these words and these words catapult us to soar high on wings like eagles that we will run and we will not grow weary. Mm -hmm. That we will walk as we walk out your plan, Father God, and we will not faint. And I thank you. I thank you. In Jesus, I pray. Amen. That's why we read. Every single day, we're not just picking up nuggets. We're picking up promises. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Our faith has to be fully and, and completely bound into the word of God. I don't have faith that God's going to rain down a million dollars out of heaven because a million dollars coming from heaven is not written in this book. But I prayed this week for God to give me more energy. And I now have a promise I can stand on that he answered that prayer. See, it was already answered. The energy was there. I had just let my faith slip. But when I read <laughs> that those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. I will soar high on wings like eagles. I, eagles. I will run and I won't grow weary. I will walk and I will not faint. I knew he heard my prayer and he answered my prayer. And if he'll do it for me, he'll do it for you. What is it that you're needing? What is it that you are that you think you are lacking? Instead of looking at the lack, write down the bounty. Write down the abundance. <laughs> See, we get to start the messianic part of Isaiah today. The first part was judgment. The middle part was hard. <laughs> Starting today, you're, we're going to finish Isaiah. And each one of your, th there are those of you that will find your guiding scriptures for this year. Some of you might find your guiding scriptures for next year. All of you will find guidance for that day, for this day. I found guidance.
for this day. In fact, he summed up my last two weeks in today's reading for me personally. I'm only giving you the tip of the iceberg of what he's done for me and where I know that I'm heading. <laughs> it is I, the Lord, the first and the last. I alone am he. What a promise. He tells me it's going to be hard. Who gives this man victory over many nations and permits him to trample their kings underfoot? With his sword, he reduces armies to dust. Why are we surprised by the battles? Why are we surprised by the resistance? He tells us in advance, just because it was labeled COVID. So what? I mean, with his sword, he reduces the armies to dust. With his sword, he reduces COVID to dust. Oh, oh, by the way, there's been a proclamation made this week that COVID is basically over. Reduce back to dust. He tells us that there'll be resistance. He tells us that there's battles to fight. When they crossed over the Jordan into the promised land, they had to occupy. They had to raise their swords, get rid of the giants, fight the battles, and occupy the land. But it was the promised land. We live heaven on earth. How did, they, how did they afford to build the temple? In David's time, he had a heart to build the temple. God told him he wouldn't be the one to build the temple. It had to be Solomon. So David started it. He laid out the plans. He started getting all of the provisions together. How, did, how could he afford to do that? Where did the money come from to build a multi, multi, multi-billion dollar temple in today's standards? He did it by fighting the battles and bringing back the plunder. And yet we see the battles wrong. We see them as a way of saying, oh, oh, maybe this isn't God's will for me. It's not supposed to be hard. Well, if I was a better Christian, I wouldn't be struggling here. If I was a better, stop it. That's what he's saying to me. Elizabeth, stop it. <laughs> Oh, but as for you, Tom and Elizabeth, I've called you back from the ends of the earth, saying you are my servant. For I have chosen you, Tom and Elizabeth, and will not throw you away. Don't be afraid, for I am with you. Don't be discouraged, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, Tom and Elizabeth, and help you. I will hold you up with my victorious right hand. I mean, there's somebody out there today that ought to be writing those words down for today and keep them with you all day long. That's why we read every single day. Every single, it's why it's important. Read it when it's hard. Read it when you don't understand. We have the truth that this word never returns void. Never, never returns void. Read it when you don't want to. Read it every single day. <laughs> mm. Anyone who opposes you, Tom and Elizabeth, will die and come to nothing. Do you know COVID died? That's one way you can look at that scripture. Anyone, anything who opposes you will die. And come to nothing. You will look in vain for those who tried to conquer you. Those who attack you will come to nothing. What is it that's attacking you? I mean, we spend a little bit of time letting ourselves think about what's been hard. There's a squirrel right there outside our window. I faced a squirrel just then. <laughs> we thought about those things that's caused us to feel as though we're weary. For I hold you by your right hand, I, the Lord, your God. And I say to you, Tom and Elizabeth, I have that written down in my Bible, by the way, back in 2019. The color is 2019. I wrote Tom and Elizabeth next to these. That's why I'm speaking it out that way. For I hold you by your right hand, I, the Lord, your God. 
And I say to you, Tom and Elizabeth, don't be afraid. I'm here to help you, Tom and Elizabeth. Don't be afraid, for I will help you, Tom and Elizabeth. You will be a new threshing instrument, Tom and Elizabeth, with many sharp teeth. You will tear your enemies apart. What is your enemy? Is finances your enemy? You'll tear them apart with your teeth. Is relationships your enemy? You'll tear them apart with your teeth. Is a sickness or an injury your enemy? You'll tear them apart with your teeth. You will tear your enemies apart, making chaff of the mountains. The mountain is whatever it is that's in front of you that's hard to climb. You're going to tear it apart with your teeth and it's going to be chaff. They're going to use it for gravel to put out on, spread out on the roads, those mountains that's ahead of you. You will toss them in the air and the wind will blow them all away. A whirlwind will scatter them. Then, Tom and Elizabeth, you will rejoice in the Lord. You will glory in the Holy One of Israel. Hallelujah. Want to know how I get through my day? You want to know how I face those mountains that are out there and ahead of me? I'm going to tear them up with my teeth. By the word of God. The B-I-B-L-E. Basic instructions for this day. And then we have the Ephesians. It's Paul's book of explanation to us. It's considered the queen of the epistles. It kind of sums up all of Paul's writings to us. There's so much in there. I could spend equally amount of time going over today's reading in Ephesians. I love the book of Ephesians, but I'll just summarize a few things for us. May God, our father and the Lord Jesus Christ give you grace and peace. By the way, in my life, I'm in a brand new season of learning a deeper level of God's grace and what that really means. I, I have not understood the definition of grace and how it applies to my life today. I'm just telling you, but I'm on my way. I'm listening more and more as I read. I'm listening all praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ. If you don't get anything else I've said today, I want you to get this. If you have made Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior, if you believe that he is the Son of God, that he died for your sins and he rose again and he sent his spirit god sent his spirit to dwell in us then you've been blessed with every spiritual blessing stop looking at the lack stop looking at the lack and meditate on this scripture i just read to you write it down write it on the palm of your hands put it everywhere you see in your life, put it on the mirror where you brush your teeth, put it on the dash of your car, say it a thousand times over. It's Ephesians chapter one, verse three. All praise to God, the father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed you, Nicholas, who has blessed you, Debbie, who has blessed you, Elaine, with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms because you are united with Christ. You've been blessed with every spiritual blessing. That means right now, this very moment, everything is as it should be because I'm blessed with every spiritual blessing. It means that everything is going to work out for God's glory because he's blessed us with every spiritual blessing. It means that, that finances are taken care of in the in the kingdom of God. And I don't have to live by the way it looks in the earthly realm. I have been blessed with every spiritual blessing. What do I have to do today? I have to focus on him today. I stand on that promise. I live my life today as though I've been blessed with every spiritual blessing. I do the work as though I'm blessed. 
I'm blessed abundantly. If I do my work as though I'm blessed abundantly, I'm going to have strength. I'm going to have an energy and an enthusiasm and a joy unspeakable, full of glory. If I live my life as though there's not enough money in my account, I don't know how I'm going to pay my bills. I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know why it has to be so hard. I don't know why I have to feel so bad. I don't know why the doctor said I have this. I don't, if we live our life by lack, we will be drained every single day. My sister Carrie, for many, many, many years, there's some little lesion on her spine that they saw in some pictures long ago that they wanted to tell her was MS. It's not, has not been, will never be, has never been MS. But for whatever reason, there's something about my sister's physical body that there will be nights that all she gets is two hours of sleep. There's many nights that all she gets is four hours of sleep. Every once in a while, she'll get six. And my sister was a lot like me prior to this, thinking that a good solid 10 hours a night prepared us very good for a day's work. And year after year after year went by, with what she saw as a lack of sleep. And my heart broke for her. I saw her lack. I saw her lack. And my sister's in the word. And my sister is seeking God. And then one day my sister woke up and said to me that if four hours of sleep is what I got tonight, God has told me that he'll give me the energy I need through those four hours. And she started praising God for every hour of sleep she gets. She started praising God and thanking God that it was enough. That she is blessed with every spiritual blessing. And I watched my sister's life change. The physical circumstances didn't change. But my sister's life changed. And my attitude towards my sister in that aspect changed. This is real life. Debbie sitting in the parking lot of the doctor's appointment is real life. Yolanda reaching out to the dream big girls saying, I lost my mama today. Pray for me. Yolanda reaching out to the dream big girls and saying, pray for me, for my son. He's, he's battling something horrible and it doesn't look good. And then two days later, putting on Facebook, she got to say the sinner's prayer with her son and that he's saved and he knows he'll be in heaven. Praise God. That's doing life together. That's standing on the word, on the promises that's in this book every single day. Every single day. That's what I want you to do. I want you to read. I want you to read. I praise God that you enjoy listening to me, listening to Debbie and Michelle and Lori. I praise God that those girls stood up and said, yes, I'll help you so that we can do this seven days a week and we don't miss. It's never been meant for you to follow us and let us read to you. I don't want those girls reading to you. I do not want this to be a line by line. I want this to be pick out a few lines, pick out some of the promises so that you see what God will do when you discipline your flesh to read in his basic instructions before leaving earth every single day. I just, I just pray that you get a little bit, that you just get a little bit. Because I look back through the years and 20 years ago, I went all the way through this and I couldn't have told you one thing I thought I got outside of guiding scriptures, which quite frankly was enough was enough i was getting guiding scriptures from this every year and it was enough hallelujah it's enough his word never returns void stop judging it with our physical eyes our physical knowledge hallelujah i gotta stop i gotta stop i i gotta stop <laughs> i love you guys and it's thankful thursday i am so thankful for this word today so thankful for the answers that I'm getting.
God bless you guys. I'm thankful for the answers you're getting because you've been blessed with all spiritual blessings. All leaves nothing out. You're lacking nothing. Lacking nothing. Thank you, Lord.